Hello everyone and welcome to Med Hedos Nerd Podcast episode 9. I'm your host Vikas Lanyan and as always I'm joined by my handsome co-host Mike Balian where we dive deep into our great Armenian history and discuss different eras, kingdoms, topics and great people. How are you Mike? Fantastic. Awesome, awesome. Uh, it's Thursday evening, September 30th and this is a live recording on Clubhouse. We were going to be on Instagram but we're having technical issues so I apologize for everybody who was trying to listen to us on, or watch us on Instagram. We're just um, a bunch of rookies. Yeah. Uh, we'll take some questions at the end of the show. We ask our audience to be res- uh, respectful to our guest and keep all questions within the topic. No political questions, please. Uh, uh, to all the audience at Clubhouse, we'll, you know, at the end of the show, you can raise your hand. We'll bring you up. You can ask your question and then go back down. Um, so we want to talk about a couple of things before we dive into the main topic and I introduce our guest. Um, you know, you had a big event. I had, a, I had a, big a milestone event. event yeah. A milestone event. Yeah. yeah what was the to, milestone event? I don't event? know. The, the look you got going. What, what, what look I got going? Oh, okay. All right. We don't want to talk about I, it. I don't okay. know. I mean, what's, so, a, what's okay, the milestone uh, event? All right, guys. So this is a joke between <laughs> us, but Mike has had long hair for as long as I, I mean, very long time. Very long time, yeah, and he shows really, up with the yeah. short haircut. So I'm trying to figure out what's happening here. The helmet, the helmet's gone. <laughs> All right, shed so some weight. Are we going through some kind of transition, no, or no, you know, no. did you meet a girl? What's nope, happening? No, nope, nope, nothing. Just, okay, just needed a change. All right, perfect. Spon- you look good. Spontaneity. Thank right, you, sir. You look good. All right, thank, thank you. you. Sir. Moving on. All right. Uh, <laughs> thank you, yeah. sir. Thank you. Uh, we also want to let you know that we are officially on Patreon.com. We uh, we weren't planning on announcing it till everything was ready. However, we uh, had our first Patreon support us, and we could not be more excited. Yes. So, to Tigran Uzunian, who lives in Toronto, Canada, uh, thank you for your pledge and support. He's our first Patreon. Uh, we have spoken to him a few times and appreciate all of the feedback and suggestions. Uh, if you like our podcast uh, and want to support us, please go to patreon.com slash medhedosnet and pledge as much as you like. Or actually, there's tiers, like it starts from $5 and so forth. And um, it just helps support the, the podcast and then we'll uh, have exclusive perks, basically, you know, uh, things like exclusive content, discounts on merchandise, uh, live Q and A's. We'll do live uh, shows, so forth. So we're going to do a whole thing with the Patreon. Um, so our main topic, as I mentioned, is Armenian language, its origins, and Armenian alphabet. Um, so without fur- further ado, our guest today is Dr. Vahan Setian, who is joining us via Zoom. Vahan was with us on our first episode, and he helped us launch this podcast, and we're thankful for that. If you haven't listened to that first episode, please go back and uh, listen to it. It's uh, about the Armenian Highland. Um, thank you for being uh, with us once again, Vahan. We sure. appreciate you taking time from your busy schedule. Uh, how are you doing good. today, this evening? I'm I should good. say. I'm good. Yeah. Th- thank you very much for the uh, for the invite again. I apologize for being away um, with with this, you know, pandemic and post pandemic situation. I deal with you know many governments across. Yeah. across the world so it's it's kind of difficult for me to kind of leave things behind but uh, i'm glad that this opportunity came for me at least to do it via zoom but next one we'll do it live for yeah. sure well we're thankful you Appreciate were able it. to join yeah, us we, uh, this is a great topic we were going to do this episode but we thought about it and we're like you know as much as we do research on yeah. on everything that we've done so far this one was like we need to talk to the experts yeah, you know we, and, and we, we need, are one of those experts we need mm. help yeah uh Vahan, if you don't mind i know in the first episode you did kind of mention about what you do your 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 experience but if you don't mind talking a bit about yourself so um, you know, our audience who doesn't know you can learn sure. about you. Appreciate it. Yeah. Well, uh, I don't want to go through a dissertation, but in, in the most simplest form, um, I'm the, the first non-native in, in U.S. history to be a tribal government official. And I have uh, international diplomatic community, which means that I work with tribal governments, federal government, and um and, and other governments across, across the globe for healthcare economic development. You know, that's one side, obviously, you know, I do my, my side uh, research on, on the, you know, on in ancient history and language. Um, I, the, the good thing is now, since I'm working with physicians, I'm also working with geneticists, you know, right. You know, we have this uh, pandemic happening. So by just by default, you know, you do have people that you can talk to 
And then, you know, besides from healthcare, we can talk about, you know, genealogy and, and so forth. So it's a good opportunity for me to bring in. So that being said, I'm right now I'm, I'm dealing with mostly federal and tribal government stuff on, on healthcare economic development in the okay. United States. Yeah. All right. Um, well, I want to start, like I said, our main topic is Armenian language, its origins and the Armenian alphabet. Um, kind of to start the first question, uh, to get into the topic, um, you know, uh, the first question to start the topic, uh, we have is how, ho- how old is the Armenian uh, alphabet based on your research? For mm-hmm. instance, uh, prior to the Armenian, uh, Armenians in the kingdom of Vaughn, which is Urartu, yeah. mm-hmm. we know they used uh, cuneiform mm-hmm. from what we know, the Armenian Highlanders used ancient Sumerian cuneiform as form of communications. What um, preceded this, if any, and where where did the influence come from? Okay, well, uh, that's a, that's a very good question, and uh, it has a lot of layers, and it does need some clarifications to it, so that way we can start from the proper footing. Yeah. Um, when when I when I was working on on my last three books um, on ancient history and language, what I first did was uh, for me to really examine um the 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 scientific research that was published in 17th and 18th and 19th centuries that was very difficult to get obviously right if you're not searching for those pdf files that have been scanned you know many years ago let's say um unless you're specifically searching for them you're not going to find them and and it was it was a good endeavor because i was able to extract certain things that didn't really align with what we're being taught and uh, when I hear your question, you know, there's a lot of misconception um, within your question. I want to clarify a few things. Uh, first of all, um, the Armenian letters that we have now, um, and we say about the, and we, if we compare it to the cuneiforms, um, the, the oldest variants of the alphabet letters that we have now are older than the cuneiforms. That's one, right? Um, if we're able to, let's say, look at our petroglyphs and hieroglyphs, you know, across our, our mountainous area. Um, we're able to see that the letters that we have now actually precede the cuneiforms that we talk about Vaughn. That's one. Uh, number two, uh, when we say uh, Sumerian cuneiforms, what we're really saying is that, you know, Sumerian Armenians use the cuneiform. Um, yeah. as, as, as far as for my research is concerned, and of course many others, um, the, the Sumerian language is just another ancient Armenian dialect. Um, and, and the, the reason why we hypothesize that is because not only do we have, you know, thousands of Armenian words that, you know, can be found in the Sumerian, um, also we have more than hundred di- uh, dialects right now that we wouldn't even be able to understand them if they were, you know, talking to us, right? Um, we're just used to a few, if, if not more than four or five, yeah. um, you know, we hear Eastern and Western, you know, sometimes the. You know, we we have others from the the regional areas of, of of Armenia, but beyond that, we don't hear the other dialects. So, uh, what what has been happening is that because of these uh, variants of, of of our language evolving into different uh, dialects, you know, uh, the 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 historians and the linguists and so forth actually have misrepresented those different dialects as languages, you know, other than Armenian, right? So we we're, we're also correcting that. So I'm going to digress on going into detail for that. But, you know, with the question of as far as, you know, how old is the Armenian alphabet? Well, we have to go back um, to our petroglyphs. And, um, you know, our pet- petroglyphs really run between 18,000 to even up to 7,000 BC. And uh, we see the prototypes of the, our, our, our alphabet the letters, you know, within, within that sphere. So we, uh, these letters that we have now were actually in use, uh, not only before the cuneiforms, but I actually believe that, you know, we had the, the, the use of the alphabet while, you know, with the use of the cuneiforms. In other words, the, you know, the alphabet itself was used, let's say by our, you know, Mithraic priests for literature and so forth. And then whatever was in the public, it was used for the cuneiforms because it's, uh, it's very, uh, it, it's it's very difficult for us to say that the our letters came after the cuneiform because uh, once you see an older version, I mean we have the letter A, 
our seventh letter of the alphabet, right? Uh, already inscribed in in a metzamor, you know, carving that goes beyond the cuneiforms that we that we that we think about. And and and, and our first letter A, which which was a representation of let's say the horns of the, you know, of of the cow or the, uh, of the bull. You know these things you have have to be correlated for us to really understand that uh, our 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 letters in the alphabet um, are actually uh, a, a a structured system that has been with us for a very long time, which I'm sure we're going to talk about you know Master of Mashtots you know in a short few in a few minutes. But yeah. um, anyway, I, I I didn't want it to be a long winded uh, answer, but we have to change the way we look at things. We we have been conditioned to look at uh, certain things in a certain way. And, and 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 let me interrupt you really quick. In what sense? In what sense would you suggest for any of our listeners? Um, yeah. How would we look at things in a different sense? How, I mean, in terms of not necessarily in terms of research, but also in terms of um, what certain things we want to look for. If let's right. say we do decide we do decide to deep dive into this topic. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, was, well, first of all, we have to look at the chronology of things and what we have been taught as the chronology, mm-hmm. right? Um, not everybody is a researcher. Not everybody has the time to do it, right? So for them, or they, all they need is just, you know, a, a textbook of things, of chronology that's made available for everybody else. But, you know, uh, as time goes by, you know, just with the simple fact that, you know, now the, the human history of civilization goes, it goes further and further back as more discoveries are made, right? So th- that changes things. In other words, just by the fact that, for example, when Portasar was discovered in 1990s, actually 1970s, but officially, let's say, presented to the world in 1990s, that should have uh and uh, it has the potential for it to change all the textbooks right all the kind of research that was done before that just just went to trash just because it just revolutionized and and changed the things the way we we feel and and think about these you know the the evolution of you know the societies and, and and so forth so same thing goes with the way we approach our language and our alphabet you know if we're saying that master of mashtots was the key in putting this the letters together. But what what is doing is that is telling your people that you didn't have those letters before, right? And that opens up a huge you know can of worms, you know, and 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 also that ties into what the Armenian and ancient Armenians were doing, you know, way before Master of Mashtots, you know, whatever were they involved in? How were they communicating with one another? How were they? transferring all their information from one generation to the other you know uh, in with with the armenian case it's different and and it's important because you know in the armenian highlands and the armenian highlanders were at the forefront of all technological and and scientific whatever however crude you want to look at it they were they were at the forefront of things you know, whether you want to call it alchemy or chemistry or, you know, farming or, you know, architecture and so forth, they were experts in it. Yeah. So I mean, you it, c- it, I mean during during our research or this venture, we've we've realized that, you know, j- b- dating back to the kingdom of Urartu, Van Ararat and whatnot, yeah. they were almost like a superpower with everything. Yeah. Yeah. They right. Super, that's, you're, that's, a su- you're a superpower exactly. for a reason. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, Kim Veltman, um, you know, m- more people are now hearing about him, uh, but he uh, he was a, a Canadian scientist and historian who I spoke with before he died last year from COVID. Um, and, uh, you know, he has published several books on, on alphabets. And when we were talking, you know, he was pretty much delving into not only our, the Armenian alphabet, but many others that were just misrepresented. Um, you know, he was correcting the way, you know, people look at the, the Semitic, uh, you know, alphabet and so forth. But, you know, he was very clear and says, you know, the Armenian alphabet is at least 17,000 years old. And it's been recorded during his lecture and stuff like that. So, Portasaj, they're dating it at 12,000 BC, right? And this guy is saying the Armenians had alphabet at 17,000. Now, he doesn't just say that, you know, we have a lot of things for us to support that. So I don't think he even had a chance for him to examine the, the petroglyphs that we have. Yeah. Can you imagine if we 
tied him up while he was doing that research with our scientists and linguists, let's say, in our main universities for how, them to examine together. How thorough was his research to be examined? Well, it's, it's, it's incredible. I mean, he's, he was the only one that has examined all the alphabets, you know, in, in a sense, we're putting them into proper structure, hmm. you know, and, and also he was also instrumental in correcting things while he was examining. Uh, yes, he was a Catholic. You know, he was using a lot of, uh, you know, uh, not theology, but, you know, the chronology of things, right? Whatever mm -hmm. he has read. But uh, by him describing these things, you know, he didn't allow, you know, Catholicism to stand in his way for him to stretch the timeline of, yeah. of how the, uh, the the alphabets was influenced. Yeah. And so for that's why I like the bottom. He, he was, you know, he kept to his faith, but at the same time, he, he was very open with how things and how far back things go. And so... So just to go back to the the, the 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 age of things, I think that eventually we are gonna you know shift back our and, and that our timeline further further back in time just because uh, the, the the civilization is is going back further. Uh, we're not talking about human beings like you know, let's say the, 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 besides from the evolutionary you know topics that we can discuss. Mm -hmm. Not that we're talking about a structured civilization where they have, you know, systemic agriculture and metallurgy and animal domestication and, you know, societies and structured religion, you know, all those things are what we say as civilization. Now, many people can define what civilization means. Um, you know, we have seen many civilizations, but they're anything but. But the idea of something structured, you know, that takes time, that takes a lot of intellect, that takes a lot of cohesion. And, and you can't have that if you don't have a structured language, you don't have a structured, you know, um, written at least however crude mechanism for you to be able to communicate your ideas, you know, from one generation to the other. Of course. And I, I want to give you a, an opposite uh, scenario, something that whatever I said, the opposite of that. Um, you know, we have been taught, you know, in... Uh, about other civilizations, let's say in South America and, and so forth, um, they they show these people that they're you know sacrificing their children and women and, and men, you know for for the sake of a better crop next year, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know for the sake of you know hopefully they have rain. Yes, um, yes. you can't have those people uh, say that they built their their pyramids. You know what I'm saying? Th those people cannot be the same people that have mastered the art of mathematics, you know, geometry for, the, for them to be able to put pyramids together. So we, we have to be very sensible and very rational in how we examine these civilizations and whether they are out of place sometimes, right? Yeah. Um, so anyway, I want to I want to just mention that that we have these different examples that we can use for us to show that what we have been taught that these people had, uh, you know, uh, no, no skill whatsoever, but they were able to build portas or, or, or for example, they, they had metallurgy, you know, they were do iron smelting and so forth, but no communication method at all. No, no, yeah, no it doesn't, written. It doesn't, it doesn't, make, doesn't, doesn't make, make sense. sense. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Anyway. I mean, it's 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 a mis it's a common misnomer these days. When, yeah, but when... my my thing is that people don't question. My my thing is that I'm 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 trying to help people to question yeah. these things, right? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. agree with you. I agree with you completely in a sense where you know I think I think that we kind of look at people from thousands of years ago and we think Cro Magnon, yeah, you know, or whatnot, whatever coin, whatever term you want to coin to them, but. Mm -hmm. They were very advanced. We, yeah. I mean, we as human beings haven't haven't really changed that much, except for technology. Yeah, right. really. Yeah. We really right. haven't. You know. But um, anyway, so Mike, I wanna... before you continue, I want to mention there's a lot of people who are who just joined us on Clubhouse. Uh, uh, I know people have questions; they're raising hands. Uh, we're going to take questions at the end of the show, so please be patient. Uh, we'll call you up, and please be respectful and keep your questions within the topic. Um, and Vahan will answer whatever questions you guys have. So, um, yeah, at, during the end of the show, when we get there, we'll, you know, go ahead and, uh, bring you back up to ask your question. Thank you. So go ahead, Mike. Yeah. So transition, transitioning into throughout time, right? Um, obviously our language or letters and whatnot have gone through changes. Um, 
one specific time period as we were talking about you know religion and Christianity and Catholicism and whatnot Master of Mashtots created the Armenian alphabet we know that it wasn't just limited to a bunch of letters that transitioned from cuneiform or or whatever else but I know I've read that our alphabet per se um, also had something to do with the cosmos can you elaborate on that yeah well first of all Master of Mashtots didn't create anything uh, but we, I mean, even even saying that he put the letters together is also a stretch. Mm -hmm. We don't even know who he was. Um, we don't even know he even existed. We have no record of all uh, of him at all after, except after his death and his and his student Gordian wrote about him. Yeah. So our main source of of Master of Mashtots is of his alleged student who wrote about him after the fact, right? Now, if he has written things, well, we don't have any record of it because everything was destroyed during the Christian transition. And actually, he was also part of that transition where he kind of um, was allowing uh, all this havoc to be against, you know, the, the, the Mithraic Armenians um, who didn't want to convert into Christianity. But, you know, that's... That's another side topic. But saying that Sir Mashtus created the alphabet is the worst thing we can say uh, to our children, at least. You know, Why is we that? have to, we have to remove that out of our vocabulary because, first of all, um, we had the letters before him. Uh, we have the evidence already. You know, we have many external sources testifying to that. Um, we even have Philostratus. You know, 150 years before. Uh, Master of Mashtos, uh, who wrote a, a piece talking about a panther having a necklace around his head um, with the Armenian wording on it. Now, that's 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 before Master of Mashtos, sometime before, right? Mm -hmm. He talks about that. I mean, if he knew that Master of Mashtos was going to invent the letters, he would not write something like that. And 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 we also have you know other indications that you know we we did have the letters, you know, before Master of Mashtos. Um, Many Roman and, and Greek historians, you know, attest to that. And also, uh, if uh, we can say Master Marshall's invented it, we we can say that he maybe put it together after the the Christian havoc. Yeah, I was about to ask. So, what would we what would we call it? What would uh, we call I, what Master Marshall did? I think Master Marshall's resurrected our 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 alphabet and our literature maybe i can put it that way okay um, because why would somebody resurrect or restructure our what we have if nothing really dangerous happened to our society and our culture right mm -hmm. we we had we already know that uh, uh and, and it, they also attest to it you know Gatangelos and everybody else um how the the pre-christian armenian culture was really devastated in all respects. I mean, I'm not just talking about, um, you know, destroying things here, there, you know, um, uh, uh, destroying a library here, there, or, or, or temples. I'm saying a virtual destruction. Yeah. During this um, is, this is during, this is during the transition. That's right. Yes. You're yes. talking about melting, let's say, mm -hmm. on heat's gold. And, mm -hmm. and, 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 and the other thing is that we had the temples that contained libraries, right? Why would you have those capabilities where you don't have, let's say, uh, 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 your, your own literature? But at the same time, we also had uh, God, uh, God Dir. You know about that, right? Uh, Dir was our god of literature. Why do you have God, your own god of literature, where you don't have literature? So, Vaughn, if, if, if just to, you know, clarify, what you're saying is uh, basically before the whole 301 AD transition or just the transition, uh, you know, we know there was a lot of destruction of artifacts. And so what you're saying is basically they destroyed the alphabet that we had. And then obviously Mesop Marstads came way after. Well, no, he was at 364, right? Okay. Yeah. 364. Yeah. yeah it was so a, he yeah. kind of rejuvenated it in a way I yes. guess you can say mm -hmm. and they claim him as the father of the right. creator of the alphabet okay. right and, uh, okay. and and they had to do that because you know all the the, the the people that had the right to publish anything at the time had to be authorized by the church okay. even even Hore Nazi you know Hore Nazi was was against this transition and and the ideas after that but he wrote it in such a way 
to give us some instances and, and some kind of undercurrents of, of what has transpired. So we already know that many of the things that could have come our way didn't come through because there was no authority. Now, uh, the, the, the Armenian church, you know, takes the credit of giving us Mr. Mashtots, saying that, you see, you know, we gave you this guy, our monk, now we have literature, now we have that. You know, although we appreciate at least the idea that Mr. Mashtots came about, whether he was real or not, whether, you know, he invented or not, we have the letters now. But the thing is, our, the structure of our letters, the 36, originally 36, I think that there were 36 even before him. And and we he just had to, it, when I say he, I mean the idea of that person. You yes. know, it could have been somebody else. I think that, you know, he, he had to find a way for him to bring back our, not only our alphabet, but the find our literature. You know, where the hell is it? No. You know, I mean, it's not about whether we had literature or not before Master of is is where are they kept? You know, where is it hidden? You know, uh, wh where has it been taken? Because, you know, you, you still need, uh, upon destruction, you still need some artifacts to be left over, you know, as your seeds for the next generation. Now, now during, during the 7th and 8th centuries, we know that there was a golden era or like a renaissance in... You know, Armenian manuscripts and Armenian art and whatnot, yes. Um, now, or, or would that be a stretch to say that, let's say, and I, I guess I want, I'm going to ask a little bit of a controversial question. It's just a thought. This is not based off of any research I've done or anything I've had, heard or read. Just want to clarify. Would that be something that, in your opinion, or, or things that you've researched and looked into, that maybe there was some fabrication or no fabrication again it's just a question i'm not asking because i've read anything or sure. heard anything fabrication or what um anything that occurred prior to that renaissance that that golden era right because there was there was a lot of there was a lot more of, of um records kept and things like that that were kind of uh resurrected i guess let's use that word loosely resurrected during this time right now they were they had to be based off of some sort of doctrine correct from the third century fourth century fifth century leading up to the seventh and eighth centuries um so w w in, w with your research is it something that um can be fully relied upon if let's say in the modern day somebody decides to go in and take take a look at these things right um well first of all we didn't have only one era where the destruction took place yeah um even after the renaissance or you know from three yes. one what have you the oldest manuscript that we have that have survived is between you know eighth ninth and tenth century you, you see how big of a gap we got yes that we don't even have <laughs> i understand let's say the christian period right okay destruction chaos fire okay after that we still don't have anything left it's their copies of copies of copies of copies mm -hmm. right and uh, there's also an instance where, you know, Quranazi had other volumes that we don't have. So uh, as, as far as answering the question of, uh, you know, whether it's a fabrication or what have you, um, the problem is that uh, we don't have, uh, we, we have a dark age or, or a very moot spot from, you know, fourth century all the way to the 10th century. Yeah. yeah. I mean, manuscripts, I understand, you know, very colorful, you know, very, you know, uh, theologically bent obviously they're beautiful with our letters and you can see how beautiful they are right and also the um, us giving thanks also for Mr. Mashtots or his being for him to invent the Georgian alphabet you know Albanian and so forth right and now I can say invent for them yeah but that's you true don't, you, have, you cannot say this. invent right you cannot say invent for you yes um, ju just because we have we have, we have strong different evidences that you know we we had the, the structured, and I, I can actually I can talk more about why I think you know we had the letters, and why it's, it was thirty six um, thirty six letters in within the same structure. Yeah. Well, but, that was actually going to be was... my next question to you. I, I I wanted to talk about more, uh, like 
you know, more about the way we write our characters in the alphabet and what impacts uh, set this course, basically. Right. Well, I mean, especially recently, you know, many, many people came about, especially like spiritual counselors and, you know, esoteric and metaphysical, you know, uh, teachers that look at the alphabet and, and they kind of decipher on their own how the, the way the, the letters are written kind of affects you know, the human body, you know, even the enunciation or pronunciation of the letters and how it's a prayer, let's say from A, A all the way to K, let's say it's a prayer. Um, that I understand uh, because, you know, if, if you hear the Armenian language, especially within, within, the, uh, uh, within the church inside, you know, you can hear that, let's say, for lack of a better word, let's say the God is talking, right? Very deep, you know, inside the lungs, in upper chest, you know, it's, it's very deep. So you can interpret it as the way that you, you want to. Um, but at the same time, if, if we're talking about a, a, a cosmological, you know, connection, um, I think that we, we have to talk about how these letters came about and how the people who were, who had this language, uh, saw and the way it was kind of, uh, what made an impact of how the letters should look like. Mm -hmm. Um, in my opinion, um, the way the letters are structured, um, I think that the, the, the language development came with the development of the way the letter should, should look like. And, and the, the, the way I look at it is that if you have the petroglyphs and the hieroglyphs at Uqtasar and Jermadzor, just that alone, um, and if you compare that to other regions across, across the globe, you have petroglyphs all over the globe, right? Yeah. Doesn't matter the era, you see it. What's unique about the Armenian petroglyphs, they're, they're abstract. Um, they're not just animals and, you know, uh, caricatures of, of different animals. Yeah. They, they are, they're very abstract. It's like somebody had the opportunity or the intellectual power for them to change uh, and, and alter the way something looks for it to represent something. And, and, and Hamlet Martyrosan did a lot of good work on this. You know, he was able to even decipher the way even uh, these petroglyphs actually sounded. But, um, but as far as the way that the letters are, I think that, you know, they are 36 for, for a few reasons. Um, first of all, when I spoke with few chemists uh, in 2014, about the connection of the Armenian alphabet with the proton numbers of the metal elements. Um, see, the thing is, it was a shock for them because they didn't know how to negate my, my comments, right? Um, and I went to a mathematician or two, uh, including one at the University of Arizona. Uh, he was the Dean of Mathematics. You know, I, I told him about probabilities of something that having this correlation, you know, what are the odds of it being correlated, right? And so the guy had nothing to say because he hasn't experienced that kind of a left fielder question. Yeah. But uh, the way, the reason why I feel that we had 36 letters for at least, you know, several thousands of years is because um, if you change any of the, the letter structure or if it's 35 or 34, or let's say if letter B is in the place of the letter D, for example, mm -hmm. the entire numerical structure changes. So you'll no longer be able to equate, let's say, the sum of the word Vosky, you know, with the proton number of gold in the, uh, you know, uh, periodic table. And, and the thing is that uh, even if we look at um, the Mendeleev's periodic structure, yes. um, if we take uh, a, a dictionary that's older, than his uh, periodic table. Yeah. We can see how, let's say how we set gold, right? We can find the word Vosky and, and stuff like that. So that we can't say that we took the periodic table and then we structured the word for Vosky, you know, to equate to, let's say a proton number of 80. So, so, so basically everything was kind of in tune or, or tied into the elements of the earth and I mean, let's let's say alchemy or chemistry. 
Yeah, not only that, but can you the imagine time. the repercussions yeah. of? See, uh, we're not only just uh, randomly saying these uh, certain elements, like pronunciations. Equate, yeah. No, no, not even that. But we're not just saying we're taking um, these certain elements and then equating to the periodic tables, proton numbers. Well, I'm talking about the seven ancient metal elements. Okay. All seven of them, and actually others are, are also equating, like Mobidens and all that. But let's say if you take the seven, those seven, all seven equate exactly to, to the proton numbers. Now, the only way we can have that is if we have a certain structure of the alphabet, right? Mm -hmm. One through 36, and they have to be the way it is now. If you change just one letter from its position, you won't be able to come up to that summation now for a chemist when they hear this obviously they hadn't they haven't even learned anything about this you know what does the Armenian alphabet has to do with let's say the periodic table yeah to tie anything in right but yeah. the thing is if you're breeding forward they can't deny it that's that's the thing right so uh, they have to leave it alone otherwise it's a it's a huge rabbit hole but but uh, the, the reason why i'm emphasizing this is because when you have and these ancients um, who would possibly even, I know that they knew what the element composition was, that these guys already had, were way advanced from the other civilizations for them to be able to know, you know, which elements to blend in to make it harder, right? You know, last time I think we talked about um, one of the swords that were found, the oldest sword in yeah. ancient Armenia, right? Yeah, we touched it on was, it, yeah. It was dipped in arsenic. Mm -hmm. Well, these guys better be a chemist for them to be able to know that if you do this, you're going to get this formula and then if you dip it here it's going to be you know stronger in, in, in our so anyway so in other words we we have to put emphasis uh not just blindly but we really have to go back and examine uh, you know how advanced were these people absolutely to have this knowledge and again for these people to have this knowledge they had to have literature they had to have, see what I'm saying? You know, if if the metallurgy was done during, let's say, 6,000 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. And we're able to connect uh, the, the seven uh, metal elements to our alphabet now, doesn't that directly tell you that the, the, the way our alphabet is had to go back to that time? What cuneiforms are we talking about? It definitely raises some questions. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, more, more okay. questions than answers, if anything. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's why I always keep it open. I mean, for me, you know, I'm a, I'm a research scientist. You know, if, if any other evidence comes forward, I have to entertain it, uh, you know, for the sake of intellectual honesty. Yeah. But, you know, it has been many years now, and uh, there has been no refutation, refutation at all, that um, our, our seven metal elements tie into the proton numbers and there's some kind of a shenanigans that we're pulling it, it, it's not going to happen so we have those facts at least uh in the preliminary facts that we see now and it's it's a it's a paradox that's why um the my book is said you know the paradox of the armenian alphabet yeah because it is a paradox you know how can one come before you know the other that we're used to at least according to you know historic the chronology yeah that's right. historic that's narrative, right. narrative yeah um okay so moving on to dialects i wanted to ask you about dialects uh, i know we talked about it or touched on it just a little while ago um and also we kind of sort of spoke about it the first uh, during our first episode right vic um yeah, yeah. so what what i want to know is how has that evolved and how um Okay, first, I guess like a lot of people would want to ask how many dialects do we really have? And what, what, how would you even classify it as a dialect if we have so many? What, what are the differences? What parts of the world? I mean, I could go on and on with more like, you know, link up more questions to this. But if you want to talk about that a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, just a little bit. Uh, obviously, we have uh, more uh, advanced um, researchers in the, in the dialect sphere. But, you know, we have more than 100. Um, our researchers say so, yeah. and uh, we can see those, we can hear those dialects as, as they speak, as we hear. And, um, you know, the, the dialects evolve, obviously, from, you know, the region and, 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 and use of a certain group, right? You know, we even have our own different dialects, uh, um, and, and, and the way it evolves, I mean, you have to give it some time, but, you know, just given enough time, you can just 
enunciate the words indifferently in based on each neighborhood. We can see that, right? Yeah. Um, even the way things are, uh, you know, pronounced. Um, let's say from one city to the next, even even in London or or in England. You know, if you talk to them, you uh, they will tell you. Yeah, the northerners and southerners. Yeah. yeah. See, yeah, and uh, the thing is, it's such a drastic difference. Though, I mean, if an Irish speaks, let's say their heavy accent with their dialect, you uh -huh. you wouldn't know what they're saying. Yeah. But you know, for them, you know, it's English. So, you know, but here's, here's the thing though, it, given enough time, um, and given enough, um, geographical space and, and allowance for certain groups to hover and to congregate and create cities for themselves, you know, given enough time, you know, that, the, that dialect will have a life of its own, especially if they don't speak with one another. That's why whenever they say this language has no relation to the other or they're separate well i think they're they're missing the point of you know time and uh you know usage and uh you know geographical separation yeah. between one to the other um you know let's say if if me you and and uh let's say some we, we take like 10 people with us and we go to another another country and we live there and i don't know two three four hundred years with no ties to our, our original point. Don't you think that the environment and the evolution of the way we speak and stuff like that oh. is going to change, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You, you even know, to English, even English to, is a, English is a perfect example. Well, yeah. not just that. If you go back to, if you look at, you know, uh, Persian Armenians, yeah. sure. I yeah. mean, yeah. their dialect, yeah. the absolutely. way they speak. Yeah. yeah. So See, the, the Persian it's... Armenian is, is less of a dialect is more of an incorporation of, you know, uh, the Persian announciation. And now, but right? what I'm saying, they've been there for such a long yeah, time. Exactly. It's, it's, yeah. it's, you know, they, they ended up picking up those sounds that you they see? incorporated into That's the right. Armenian language. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if you think about it, you know, they do speak Armenian more like, I would the, say the closer far, to... The Farsi, it's the Farsi, it's the yeah, Farsi pronunciation. But what I'm saying is like, it's not the Western Armenian, it's more no. of the Eastern Armenian, yes. but yes. with the Farsi enunciations and they also created some words... Speaking, yep. I'm married to a Paras guy, so I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, uh, it's but if it's, you pay attention, yeah, if you pay attention to the I love the Paras guys, by the way, <laughs> don't, yeah. don't, don't start hating me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, for the, their usage of words, actually, they use even a very ancient Armenian words that even Eastern Armenians don't use, yeah, if you yeah. pay attention, yeah, that's true. That's interesting. Um, they actually yeah. use, I've, I've, I've never, I've never worked what, up on that. Uh, they use more proper words. That's than right. Highest yeah, really? Do. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. See, yeah, I've yeah. never, for I've example, never picked up on that. Oh yeah. Uh, for example, the word let's say Nala right? Yeah. yeah. When was the last time we used Nala Never. Right? <laughs> but they use it uh, in a in a general sense, right? Yeah. You know. Uh, you know. Uh, anyway, uh, the, uh, the the good thing is that uh, it's a very good example also that, that the Persian Armenians being in in Iran for many years, they were able to retain. Um, some of the the elements that you know for them to continue using it uh, it's just that the way they, they enunciate things but you know beyond that you know they have they speak very proper as far as the usage of of the Armenian words if they want to so to go back to the to the dialects now we're not even talking about a, a regional dialect shift we're also talking about um, let's say one group goes to to the other side of the planet let's say the, the Basque, you know, our, our Basque kinsmen to a point where they even forgot where they came from. Right. I mean, if, if, if you take a, a, let's say 10 people and they live their lives and the next generation comes and so forth, if they don't, if they don't remind themselves where they came from, they'll never, they'll never f f have the urge for them to figure out where their origins are. Yeah. Even though they're using Armenian terms, like for example, in Basque country, we already know that there is a street called, you know, uh, Armenia and stuff like that. We we see it. Uh, we have, you know, uh, I even you know wrote the book, the uh, the Armenian origins of Basque, which was the support of Vahan Sarkisian's, you know, big big work that he did. Even that, I mean, even it's staring in their face, uh, sometimes it's difficult for them to kind of reach out to their origins because they think that's their origins over there. But but anyway, to 
to go back to the dialects, obviously, you know, we have many. And even in even in the Armenian region, if uh, you have two different dialects speak with one another, they won't be able, be able to understand it at all. Yeah, it's 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 interesting because I know I know sometimes my mom has mentioned some things about certain areas of even current day Armenia. There's the the, the dialect that they speak is almost you, you can't understand a word they say. And I mean, she's, she's given me some examples of it. Let's say, or let's say she's shown me some clips from old movies. I'm yeah. like, what are they saying? Like you, I, I personally can't pick up anything. Well, I gotta say like my, my grandma, my mom's side, um, she spoke Western Armenian mixed with Eastern Armenian. Uh, well, I, I should say, Eastern, but she also used some old words that it was just like, we couldn't understand what she was saying. So she was a hybrid. Yeah, I guess you can say that. <laughs> I guess you can say that. Yeah, in that sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's 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 interesting because there's so many. I've I've person. I don't know which one's what. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm, I'm sure during this adventure, we'll find out more. And and you know, be able to learn who's who and what's what. But again, I've there's a lot of things that let's say I've and even old text old text like old books old poetry or whatever the case is from hundreds of years ago sometimes you read it and you don't understand what, what these words mean yeah right? yeah, yeah. Sure. i mean even uh, I'm, I'm glad that i'm glad also you know we we have the uh liturgical you know books right um uh, the, the, that the church uses and yeah. it's a good testament of you know the way they speak right so uh, mm -hmm. and how how our ancients kind of spoke yeah or could have spoke right it's it's so different um, it's so powerful at the same time, and 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 that is also a testament that it, when 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 I hear let's say a deacon or a priest let's say praying from the lit liturgical book in in a church, especially yeah. when it echoes, for me that's an echo of our pre-Christian past. He's just using the current right yeah. uh, you know religion for him to express, but in my in my ears. I hear it. Uh, I mean, uh, if you pay attention, the way they they say certain things and then the words that they use, it's really an echo of our ancients talking from you know, thousands of years ago. And uh, that's why I'm glad that at least we have those books that that we can examine. You know, uh, regardless of its content, just the way you know they're yeah. uh, that they're spoken and so forth, right? It's 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 amazing. Vaughn, can I ask you something? Uh, if 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 you're talking about you know Messer of Marshall's creating the alphabet, obviously he was born in 364, I Some, believe, something somewhere like around, that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the whole transition obviously started way earlier than 301 AD. I know they yeah. kind of just picked that date as a mm -hmm. yeah, it's arbitrary episode. number. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So. You know when Christianity started moving into Armenia and and you know the 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 preaching and the gospels mm. and all this stuff, what language were they? Uh, I mean, how are they writing this? How are they reading it? What language was it? Like, well, for first of all, you know, by tradition, you know, Christianity its entrance um, was much earlier. You know, they say in you know the first century, first and century, then they say yeah. in the second century, and then saying King Akbar was Christian, and then Jesus wrote letters to him, and all that nonsense. Um, see, the thing is, Asubius uh, was the guy that um, fabricated those letters from from Jesus to King Akbar, and then in return, and then now we're repeating it as it was actually done. But uh, the reason why I say that because. Um, when when you have these apostles uh you know coming through and establishing you know uh their presence in armenia and so forth mm -hmm. uh in many respects you know you have to look at it as a metaphor than an actual history you know because if you look at nicodemus and all those you know uh, apostles you know that they have presence in india they have presence in syria you know all over the place in one in one time you know we have to you know take it with a grain of salt but as far as for their preaching, you know, they say it was in Aramaic, you know, and then the people say Aramaic was Armenian and, and stuff like that. So we, ha it's very hairy. Is there proof uh, that Aramaic was Armenian? Well, the the proof as far as in uh, in its in its uh, transition from let's say the the Indo Europeans or the Armenians there, and then the uh, then the Semitic language overlay on on, on all that, yes. 
because you know and and people are using that for them to say well you know uh, jesus himself was was not was not a jew or a hebrew he was armenian and stuff like that but that also gets very hairy um yeah. now paris heroni you know looked at let's say the aramaic language and its script and said well now you can see that this is armenian Armenian alphabet just jumbled up for them not to be recognizable. You know, you have, we have a lot of conjectures, you know, we have a lot of, you know, opinions and theories on or surrounding yeah. this. But what I can say was that, you know, the, the, the entrance of the apostles into Armenia, you know, had to have been in, in different languages, obviously, for them to kind of influence this. Uh, within the the Armenian sphere, wasn't it, wasn't it Greek and Roman for or, or Greek for the most part, at least well, for some well, to some extent? Yeah, to me, I mean, it was translated. I mean, yeah. the Old Testament was translated yes. into into Greek, right? The, the Septuagint was translated into uh, into Greek, and then from Greek into in, into other languages. Um, but uh, you know, you see a consistency of 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 this constant. Uh, pressure and impact, you know, within Armenia itself, it was, mm -hmm. it, it felt like it was this um, covert military, um, you know, uh, kind of war toward the, the the Armenian kings because the only way they could have won the war uh, militarily with the Armenians was for them to destroy from within. Of course, I mean it's right. it's 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 what's happened in history. That's right. right. Even any even any, today, any right? race, anyone, anything, yeah. anywhere. It's not yeah. just us. Yeah, it's a systematic breakdown. Right, and yeah. and the thing is, you know, as far as the the Armenian, you know, uh, military and warriors and kings had to uh, are concerned throughout time, you know, uh, many attest to the power of the Armenian army, so they had to kind of destroy from within. That's exactly what happened. You know, Gregory the Parthian comes in, you know, what have you, and then starts destroying. Um, but but the, the unfortunate thing is that when um, when when a person doesn't really realize what transpired, um, they see it as a good thing. I don't care, you know, whether we had letters or books and stuff like that, as long as Jesus came, right? You know, that kind of a concept. And sure. that kind of uh, uh, hides the entire history that what, that we we can entertain um but if you look at it from uh you know from a realist standpoint they tell you that you know Mesut Mashtas was involved in the destruction of the Christian Armenia Gregory uh King Turdat gave the okay for Gregory then uh, you know the Parthian to destroy or everything that has to do with non-Christian Armenia. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. We, no, it's it's no. in front now of us, but nobody's paying attention. Now we're getting into like some really cool fourth century uh, conspiracy well, theories. Our last kind of cool. I mean, our episode, last episode was, uh, well, the one before that was 301 AD. Yeah, and yeah. We kind of touched up on yeah, this. Yeah, we did. I wanted to, um, when you talked about the Indo-European, uh, and, and I want to ask you this question, you know, many researchers from other countries may argue that Indo-European languages may have some words that sound the same and might even have the same meaning, which doesn't necessarily mean it's Armenian. How do you confirm that the origin of these words are Armenian and were adopted by these other languages? Um, I approach that in, in two different methods, and, and I use these two um, when I examine any word within the Indo-European Indo-European sphere. Um, just to repeat, if I was away from the microphone, um, I, I I usually take two steps. Uh, it might be two separate steps, but two steps for me to really examine if something is just a coincidence or even if, whether it's Armenian or also the question of uh, who influenced who. Okay. So I think that would would summarize your question. Well, first of all, um, for for a word. Uh, to have no uh, meaning beyond, let's say, uh, if it doesn't have a description or the root words are not in that language, then that that word is not that that language's um, own word. Um, so let me put it another way. If you don't have the elements of that word, if you break it down, if, if you can't describe it within your own language, then it's not yours. For example... For example, let's say uh, let's say the goddess Anahit. Okay. Okay. Uh, many people say it's uh, came from Iran, or it's a Persian goddess, right? Persian mm -hmm. goddess yeah. and then influence. 
Well, uh, if you if you examine on a heat from the etym etymological standpoint within the the Persian language, yeah, th there is no uh, etymological origins in in the Persian language, but there is an Armenian. It means anhatakan. It mm -hmm. means unique, solitary. Um, you know, same thing with let's say where they they can use the word aramazd, right? Yeah. They they use Ahura Mazda the way they enunciate it, but the root words are not there. Ara, Ara is ours, uh, Imast is ours, right? So all these things uh, come as origins within the Armenian language. And then too, if something, if a word sounds the same and means the same thing, that means they're correlated. Yeah. Um, I would understand, let's say we say dog, it means dog in our language and dog in something else has nothing to do with it. That I understand is a coincidence, but if it sounds the same and it, it, it kind of, uh, you can see all the, I mean, if it uh, quacks like a duck and, you know, you Sounds know, all like that looks like yeah. a duck. Yeah. 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 But we yeah. can go beyond that. And, and also the, the Indo-European thing, um, this Indo-European examination started really in, you know, 16th and 17th centuries, uh, by Europeans who didn't know Armenian. So, you know, they, they, they find uh, certain words in India and they say, oh my goodness, you know, there's a lot of similarities in Greek. And, and that's how the idea started, the examinations. Yeah. But if they actually knew the Armenian language, you know, all, they would see that all the arrows lead to Armenia. I mean, we have had many examinations and over and over again, that the you know all the arrows of the indo-european language expansion or origins are in the armenian highlands yeah however you look at it you know they may call it the armenian hypothesis but the armenian hypothesis armenian highland hypothesis is getting stronger and stronger and stronger right uh not only from the language expansion standpoint but uh when ivanov and gamgerlize uh ucla they were examining you know they they, they saw that the origins, let's say they postulated that the, the, the Armenian highlands was the origins of the Indo-European language or the Aryan. Um, that was even before all these great found, finds were found in Armenia. You know, the Port Assad and everything else, right? So if, if the linguists have been saying for the last 200 years that the, the arrows lead to Armenia and Armenian language is the base and so forth, and then you add other elements to it. Uh, the, the many firsts of civilization, all the elements of civilization, let's say, if you add it together, then you have a very comprehensive evidence or a summary of evidences, right? That you can present saying that the, the, the Armenian language itself is the foundation. Uh, if you look at uh, the examinations of words, you know, sometimes you will hear, uh, for example, they would say, this word and then they would say uh, well proto-indo-european it was sounded this way mm -hmm. and then influenced latin and then greek and then now we have it as in english as x right yes. we have this chronology yes well if you pay attention to that quote-unquote proto-indo-european mother tongue uh, many of those words can be found now in armenian language but they never say it why they is never that why why um, why is that is that is that because they're trying to push a certain narrative and and this can, this is this is going to kind of lead me into my next question of course but yeah. i guess I'd call these preludes to it right. um you know why why is that how is that how does that work out over let's say the last couple centuries when mm -hmm. they're they're putting out so much information for people to let's say look into and whatnot now we have a lot more information at right. our fingertips yeah. right mm -hmm. with the internet and our phones and whatnot right so why would the narrative change? Why would the doctrine change or not change? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and this, this is basically my next question to yeah. you, I guess. Okay, well, uh, we already know that um, at the uh, late 19th century, the, the massacre started mm -hmm. toward the Armenians, the, uh, the Abdul Hamid massacres, yes. right? So what that does um, is that it, it starts a, um, this, this brush fire that starts uh, downgrading or destroying, let's say, certain things that were true before and now kind of they're trying to, uh, through genocide and eradication, remove you from the books, right? Mm -hmm. um, and also, of course, 1915 and beyond all the way to 1923. So that's what a generation or two 
Now, that's generation or two of, of genocide and culture side, which means that there is a huge gap now in history where others are going to come in and write their own type of a history, which pushes you away from you as an Armenian who once used to be in all the pages of ancient history yeah. and language. Now you're being pushed away. Now that gives a gap. Now there is a vacuum. That vacuum now is is being written by others who have occupied your lands, yeah, right? So it's like a power vacuum, right? Yeah. And the thing is, uh, those people now understand the power of repetitive falsehoods to be eventually true, for you, right? And then you see it now. Uh, you you see all the ancient stuff that has been found in ancient Armenia. They're calling it Turkish or ancient Turkish, yeah. and then you know the Azerbaijani on the other side, and then Georgians at the north. Uh, they don't see this. I'm saying, even though they know that the ancient Armenians and and its lands were such such size that it kind of it's there. It was the, those lands before. Yeah. But but because they have that opportunity and they had that opportunity now since the last 120 years. Now what we're doing now is not only we're trying to um, uh, get back that glory of our ancient past. We're also trying to convince ourselves to the people who don't believe it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. I mean, it's look, it's modern. I mean, again, we're not trying to get into politics, but it's modern um, financial lobbying power. Yeah. Right. I mean, uh, it, and, and, and I agree. Uh, so however we describe this, I think that um, we need to, first of all, as uh, the, the ethnic group that we are about our own culture and heritage and language for us to really understand it first. Um, you know, um, go back and really learn it and then blame others, non-Armenians, for destroying our language and, and why they're not understanding the things yeah. we're trying to tell them. You know, we first yeah. need to understand ourselves. Yeah. And what's the... So, yeah. I think the, the, the last question before, I think the audience wants to answer the question, uh, what's the repercussion on a global global scale, I guess? You, of, of what we're trying to do yeah, with this? Yeah, yeah, with yeah. This? yeah. Well, um, if we have enough financial support uh, for us to be able to uh, publish and publicize our findings, not the propaganda, just the findings alone, um, we can uh, literally we can literally uh, rewrite, forced for the books to be rewritten based on this information. Because, as far as I'm concerned, uh, Portasar's discovery hasn't really made a dent to all the test books yet. Portasar is still part of, you know, a minor literature yeah. um, that people just, if they want to, they can read about it. But, you know, it's, it still hasn't changed things. Yeah. Also, at a global scale, what we'll do is it will rewrite the etymological dictionaries. Um, now that you're able to kind of, for example, when it says Proto-Indo-European, it would say Armenian and then Latin, right? Yeah. Or, or Greek yes. and then Latin. Uh, in my books, I show the chronology very simple in, in a very simple format. Uh, because obviously, I mean, we have to really accept at least this idea that Armenian is older than Latin, right? I mean, you got to be insane for you to say that Armenian is not older than Latin. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm personally, right. I'm convinced I mean, now. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, okay. So well, obviously uh, going through school and, you know, growing up through school, you're, you're taught otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we all are. Yeah, right. So uh, even even the Etruscans, right? I mean, who were who were the who were the Italians? The Italians were, you know, Etruscans. Were who were the Etruscans? Okay, well, we already have that read that book. You know, the Armenian origins of Etruscans. And the thing is, it's not only just um, before you know, 150, 200 years ago, the 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 scientists were just examining this as a linguistic venture. As a linguistic adventure, you know, a comparative linguistics. Yeah. What's interesting is that now with hard sciences, it's proving the same thing. Yeah. The DNA analysis and stuff like that. But I, in my opinion, I think that uh, what, the biggest impact it's doing right now globally is that it's putting uh, a lot of emphasis on who really were the ancient Armenians and, and, and how far they go back. and. and if we were Sumerians in, in the textbook Sumerians or the, the Egyptians, <laughs> everybody Bingo. would talk about, Bingo. everybody would say everything, uh, bingo, you know, is, right? 
Yep. But we're still alive. So they're saying, okay, well, how are these people still alive? Well, in my opinion, we're just dinosaurs. It just happened by chance, you know, so survive this far. Slip through the cracks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> but, you know, it, by just just by, you know, history alone, you know, we're, we have outlived our, our eras, you might say. Yeah. But, yeah. But um, if we can, you know, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Cut yeah, you I, was, off. I, I was, I was just gonna say that, you know, uh, this is the generation, and hopefully the next one for us to, um, well, br- that, bring that, back. Yeah, that, I mean, this whole podcast, that our goal has always been to educate the uh, the next, edu- and I don't want to say educate, but you know, well, to I inform, mean, to, to bring light, yeah, to bring light to, to, bring light to everything about our history. It doesn't yeah. matter from the language to all the kings, queens, and and just events that have happened. Uh, Vaughn, uh, it just again, we are live on uh, Clubhouse. Uh, we have a nice audience right now, and uh, they do have some questions. Vaughn, are you ready? I'm ready. Uh, I'm gonna bring some people up. Well, I'm ready. Uh, I want to tell my audience, guys, please be respectful. Uh, keep your questions about the topic. Uh, nothing about political questions. Uh, we don't want to get uh, you know sidetracked no, and nothing, go off on nothing, a different subject that has nothing to do with what we're talking con- about. Nothing controversial. So, um, so if you have a question, raise your hand. I will bring you up after you ask your question. Please uh, go back down, and then uh, Vaughn will answer your question. So nothing about you know uh, capital punishment or uh... <laughs> <laughs> nothing of that. So uh, gun control, abortion. No, no, no not, nothing about. <laughs> Nothing about COVID, none of that stuff, yeah, please. Yeah, let's stay away yeah. from that topic, guys. Um, uh, we have Vaughn. Vaughn, I know you have a question. You've been, uh, you know, you had your hand up for a while. Uh, Vaughn, go ahead. I have all that. The Ethiopian alphabet, the Armenian, um, the Arvank, and the original Georgian alphabet, Asom Tavruli, are extremely similar. Um, and one would assume that they all have the same origin. But... Um, and we could definitely say, as a matter of fact, that the Asum Tabruli and Ahuang alphabets are indeed uh, um, come from the same origin. But uh, as far as a pre Mashlotian alphabet, there's an interesting passage that even Koryun himself admits um, in part six of um, his account. He says that um, he says that Mashlot was in Syria. Uh, looking, for, there was an Armenian king in Syria who had somehow retained Armenian letters, and this Syrian monk takes him to like uh, basically reveals that he he basically kept this ancient Armenian script very specifically. So Koryun never actually said that Mashtot necessarily invented the Armenian alphabet. He said he retrieved it. Um, and then the interesting part, the link here to Ethiopian is that everyone says that the Ethiopian alphabet, the one that they use right now, is older than Armenian. But that's untrue, of course. And th- this needs to be pounded in the heads of every Armenian because it's typically a Turkish and an Azeri um, sort of uh, argument point to, sure. try, to try to put us down. And what, what many Armenians don't realize is that there was a Syrian monk called Frumentius that went to Ethiopia in the 4th century and he is the one attributed with changing uh, the old uh, Ethiopian script, which was like scribbles, essentially very kind of similar to like Arabic, if you will, to an extent. And then he's the one that actually developed the more syllabic um, alphabet, which Ethiopians have today. Yes. And the interesting link here is Syria. So the, it was a Syrian monk who went to Ethiopia and developed the current Ethiopian alphabet so essentially, the Ethiopian alphabet took its um, took its basically inspiration again from Armenian because that's where the old Armenian letters were retained, as per Koryun. And even the Ethiopians themselves, um, they don't deny this. They say yes, it was um, it was uh, the Frumentius who developed Abu Gida, which is the current script. That's one point. Uh, and you can expand on that. And second is uh, yeah, you're absolutely right about Etruscan. So. Um, Robert Ellis, when he wrote about Etruscans, he had no idea about um, excavations that occurred in Tuscany, but it was only like a hundred years later that they actually found tons and tons of Urartian uh, metals and gold in Tuscany. And then if you look at the haplotypes of um, those from Tuscany, it's uh, very similar to those from Armenia. Mm -hmm. Um, 
But and then and then my third point here, and hopefully you can address this, is we're not a very proactive people in in uh, protecting our heritage. So we have to think very basic sometimes. And basic people, what they do is they go on they go on Google, they go on Wikipedia, and they look up articles and things about Armenia. Now there was a time where a lot was attributed to Armenia on Wikipedia, but unfortunately. Um, we have a lot of enemies, and we have also. I want to say I hate this type of um, this type of a stance, but people are quite envious of us. Um, and what I've noticed is that a lot of our heritage is actually stolen by Iranians too. So, for instance, if you go on the Kingdom of Sofin or Gamach, uh, which is um, uh, Cappadocian Kingdom, these kingdoms have been completely uprooted of the term Armenian. So now it's just considered a a basically a kingdom that's related to only Greeks, um, Iranians, and um, completely void of Armenian input. Funnily mm-hmm. enough, mm-hmm. and we're not proactive. There are there are no groups in Armenia are out that are proactive in trying to change these in Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. The, the facts don't lie. We have them, right. um, and this is just tip of the iceberg. There's so much more we have to try to reclaim, but we've lost this all. So I just wanted to make uh, those three uh, points. Well, Vaughn, um, uh, Vaughn, we um, I appreciate the the commentary because uh, first of all, I agree on all three points, and so uh, and I also agree with you about uh, Korion. Um, you know, he has uh, one area where he says, you know, Master of Mashtots went to these locations to extract. And also, he has also other locations that it says, by the grace of Jesus Christ. Uh, Master of Mashtos gave us the the letters. So, you know, that's why I was trying to limit my, you know, theological position on, on Korean. But obviously, you know, we, we agree that, you know, it's, it's, it's virtually impossible for, uh, for us to have had Master of Mashtos just invent things out of thin air, uh, to be that concise, to be that, uh, to have that depth, um, uh, for it to be that well thought of, um, especially when it was determined that, um, the translation of the uh, the New Testament by the Armenian was the queen of all translations. I mean, you can't have uh, invented something out of the air and for it to be that impactful. Um, as far as for the the comments for um, uh, the the falsification, um, and 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 our, we don't have a a, a joint for, uh, front in trying to battle this. Well, that's true. Um, first of all, um, our priorities, at the most part, have have changed, and and if you if you actually uh, read or hear or even view my my previous podcasts and videos um, that I've been on on the radios and TVs, you know, for many years, um, I have been harping on that idea that we we do need an international front of intellectuals and financiers for us to be able to support and, and make sure that our, our history and our language don't fade away. Um, because we have the enemies already at our gates doing constantly. I mean, Turkey and Azerbaijan and, and, and even Georgia, you know, they're spending millions of dollars on the eradication of anything that has to do with Armenian. And the thing is, I mean, if you don't pay attention to your gold or treasure in front of you, others are going to take it. And that's exactly what's happening right now. Um, you know, it's like others are inventing their own history and they they uh, misappropriate our history, you know, including, let's say, many of the, the Persian elements, too. I mean, the Armenian Highlanders were, were much you know, we we're already doing extraordinary things even before there was an idea of a Persian empire or even before that. So uh, at the same time, I don't think that people um, have the capacity for them to uh, visually um, kind of visualize uh, the chronology of events and also huge timelines. You know, we're finite beings. You know, we live, you know, fortunately, seven to 80, 90 years old. We can't really conceptualize 10,000, 5,000 are mine. So it's, it's sometimes people get lost in the chronology. You know, they, they can't figure out who came first, who came second. Um, and even if, let's say, evidence has come through, um, you have a lot of those dark forces that want to make sure that the status quo is is intact. 
not only let's say for political reasons but also imagine a professor who has spent let's say you know 50 60 years examining something and then uh, they read uh something that came about uh, that would completely change uh, what he has studied or researched for, you know, that's very detrimental to, to him as, uh, as far as a career goes. So we have many elements of, of issues that have been bombarding us. And, and the thing is, the unfortunate thing is that uh, as much as we try to do on an individual basis, uh, the overall foundation is fading unless we, uh, we have a bigger group that publishes and, and speaks and kind of communicates um, the, the bedrock. Uh, of human civilization that that we know of, um, and and make it available for everyone to to understand, and 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 even Wikipedia. I mean, Wikipedia is the worst place they can go to get any kind of substantial research, but it's also a place that people get educated from, and and we need to make the corrections for every one Armenian who wants to publish the truth. You have hundred non-Armenians who are ready to eradicate that truth. And, and we are outnumbered. And the thing is, we're fighting a, a very prudent and, um, you know, a justified war when it comes to us. We're trying to protect our very existence while others are trying to take away that existence and incorporate into their own. That's why the Azerbaijani doofus is trying to find his Azerbaijani map in an ancient, you know, he, he can't. He can't even, you know, fathom the idea that there was no Azerbaijan, right? I mean, same thing with the other side, you know, um, at the Turkish side and the Georgian side. I mean, everybody is taking everything that Armenians have, but we are the ones that are not paying attention to this. And fortunately, we have people like you and many others in this group that not only are interested in to learn more, but also their their heart aches. That you know, uh, as as more we find about our, our our ancients, you know, we realize that if we don't protect them, you know, they're gonna fade away, and it's, it's only gonna be just a figment of imagination in the next few generations. So appreciate the uh, the Bob, commentary. If, one. if, Thank if you. I can add, yeah. No, I I was just gonna say, Vaughn. I I've known Vaughn. I've met him through Clubhouse, and. He is so well versed about our history. And, yeah, it and sounds like it. I, I hope more people take the time uh, and and do their research and 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 learn more about who we are, where we come from. Yeah. The whole point of this podcast is mm -hmm. about this. We that's it's why about we have, collaboration, yeah, of course. To spark, yeah, to spark, yeah, to yeah, spark yeah. that yeah. conversation. Yeah. Go research, guys. We our history is so rich. Uh, I and mean, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, it's awesome. Vaughn, thank you so much. I, I mean, I appreciate the question. Yeah, and also one more thing I want to add to Vaughn's commentary on Ethiopian. You know, there is a reason why the Ethiopians are using the Armenian language for their liturgy. Um, I mean, the, the, they they know about the history, and and that's why people, when they emphasize the Ethiopian, the even the Armenians are saying. I, I get a message sometimes saying, Vaughn, uh, have you seen this, how similar the Ethiopian is to the Armenian alphabet? And in my mind, I'm saying this person is missing the point. And of course, obviously, you know, you need to go through a summary of why they're similar because, you know, they are the same. They have the same Armenian roots. But, you know, it, it, it takes time. And, and, and we're just trying to educate as many people as we can while educating ourselves on the things that we don't know. Yeah. Yeah, ferment, fermentius is the key there in Ethiopia, and many people forget that and, and are yeah. unable to answer or yeah. respond to Turks and Georgians alike that like to take jabs at us when it comes to yeah. the topic. But of course. it's as clear as day, facts cannot be denied. And mm -hmm. and this is like individuals like you that are excellent at uh, putting out the facts and having mm -hmm. a scientific uh, methodology and conveying sure. it. Uh, we, we look to people like you to kind of publicize it since you have a lot of uh, we have a huge following. But last point here, uh, Vahan, uh, are you familiar with Robert Sepper, by the way? Yes. Okay. So um, he is an anthropologist. He puts out these kind of trendy videos and he, yeah. he kind mm -hmm. of, he kind of, he kind of gets the attention of uh, maybe a younger audience. Mm -hmm. And originally he was, he, he was very, uh, I would say, um, unsure about mentioning things or links related to Iran. He was a little bit hesitant. So what he did is he grew his audience 
And then all of a sudden, mm. he's gone full like Iranologist mode, where everything originates from Iran, yes. and he always he always avoids the uncomfortable uh, point at hand. Um, he he will mention everyone from everywhere apart from the most uncomfortable place on earth, which is Armenia. But mm. he will allude to it in specific ways in his videos, like he'll say, you know. Um, uh, according to uh, historical chronology, man came from the Caucasus mountain. That's where they say Noah's Ark landed and da-da-da-da-da, and that's all he will say. But he will never mm. go in depth. He'll avoid the uncomfortable question related to Armenia. And it's a bit frustrating because people people think, because someone like Robert Sepper, who's obviously not stupid, but right. um, they think they're getting the truth from him. But right. he is, again, um, he has a very Iran-centric point of view. Right. And, I, I'm not necessarily Armenian centric. I'm literally just tr truth centric. That's right. I know. That, that's the right. difference, and and I agree with you. And 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 uh, I have I have been uh, approached in a similar uh, manner when, um, you know, why be ethnocentric? All we're doing is just laying the foundation, and because just the chronology alone. Uh, would would prove uh, what came first and what came second if only people are just intellectually honest with themselves that's our issue um, whenever they uh, that's why I use the Anahit and Aramast um, as an example of of uh, who influenced who and uh, and and we come to the point where if if its roots its actual essence uh, cannot be described or defined within your own then it's really not yours and there are many things that that are uh you know these people consider to be iranian which which will which is not if you actually study the evidence um but they the, but th that's the thing though when it comes to us uh we can always change our mind based on new evidence but these people have a certain agenda you know it it, it sounds uh the way they approach these things uh, when they were where they are Iran centric or Turkish centric, it seems like they have this specific agenda, and it doesn't matter what you say, they're going to push that that agenda. That's how it feels, and that's how you know that there is a undercurrent behind of what they do. Yeah, exactly. And Vahan, I mean, maybe maybe someone like you uh, should also take that approach. Maybe create videos like uh, mm. Robert Sepper. I think yeah. you do. It. You do great because I'm telling you, these lot are literally stealing our heritage from our right. fingertips. Yeah, um, and uh, by, here's by, the by, other by thing: doing trendy things. Yeah, and here's the other thing, and I think that you bring up another good point. Um, we we have to also realize that we have our own Armenians within um, American universities who are falsifying our own history, and I do talk about that. And it's very unfortunate, but uh, you know we have Armenian professors in a very high-ranking positions who are publishing anti-Armenian uh, false information and, and using it as student material. Uh, Richard Hovanisen is one of them, and so you know uh, Robert, you know Kawi and you know. That's Ronald funny Suni. you say. That's funny you say his name. We we reached out yeah. to him. He never got back to us. So yeah. maybe he heard our. Uh, first he knows episode. me very well. You know that that that's a, that's. <laughs> see, the thing is, you know, I'm sure that he has done a lot of good research when it comes to um, our genocide. Nobody's taking that that credit away from him. But when you say you know contrary things, especially when you publish them and and you promote them when it comes to ancient history. And, and and you get read. Uh, I had a confrontation with him many years ago, and he didn't have anything to say um, in, in Arizona uh, State University. And if he's hearing now, uh, you know, he, he would know what I'm talking about. People like him, you know, are our are, are, are biggest threat. Our biggest threat is not external, is internal. Yeah. If we can solve our internal problem, the external problem would never be, you know. That, had, that, goes, with any, that goes with any organized civilization. It's yeah, never yeah. usually external st threats. It's what happens internally. It's unfortunate. That you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vaughn, thank, thank you so much you. for the uh, for the question. Cheers, yeah. uh, Vaughn, appreciate it. Uh, we have Sato, who's next. Sato, if you want to unmute yourself and uh... Sato. Yeah. Hey, hey guys. Hey, thanks, Sato. Vic, uh, Mike, uh, Vaughn. Thanks for. for uh, I call it an interesting discussion. Um, you know, Vaughn, you. I guess you alluded to, or you, you made the claim that Mashtots and, well, the, during our transition period, Mashtots and Christians yeah. destroyed a grand, 
pre-Christian civilization, right? Yes. I'm curious. So yes, right. And I'm curious, where can I look for the evidence of this and some literature to better inform me? Because we have pre-Christian Roman civilization that we can look to, and we have the same thing in Greek civilization. Mm -hmm. These pre-Christian periods to look at. So I guess the question is, why don't we seem to have that in Armenia? And if we don't, what's the reason? Because the transition period that you alluded to as well, you guys didn't seem to get too deep into this. I understand why. This seems like another two-hour conversation. But that transition period that we're talking about seems to be no more than, I mean, max, let's say, a generation seems like we're talking about half a generation where the destruction of a grand Armenian pre-Christian civilization took place. Yeah. And if that happened within half a generation, why do we not see similar evidence artifacts that we find in pre-Christian Roman civilization and pre-Christian Greek civilization? Okay, sure. Uh, well, and first that's of my all, question. I appreciate you guys for your time. Thank you, yeah, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Well, first of all, um, but that's that's the thing. Um, Agathangelos, uh, you know, Hore Nazi, um, and and many others um, within that time have written everything about this. So you you can resort to that um, as far as reading of what they actually did. Um, number two, uh, it wasn't half a generation; it was at least four. And you know, with Master of Mashtos coming about um, at the end of uh, fourth century and and all the destruction before him uh ju even just one generation of destruction um would would not allow the next generation to even consider what happened before them when they grow up the all they see whatever is around them is is it um there would be there would be no inclination of for them to see wait a minute you know were we christian before this and then also uh i i specifically mentioned that in armenia when it comes to armenian culture it was a virtual total destruction total destruction and um if you if you read those publications of that of people at that time you know they would say that everything was destroyed in armenia and so for a very good well from my standpoint, not a good reason, but for, at that, from their standpoint, it was a very good reason. Um, everything that the Armenian history had, um, as far as the pre-Christian, whether it was their literature or whether it was their their know-how, even even Mithraism that Armenians were, they refuted everything that Christianity stood for. They had to destroy that, uh, destroy it virtually for the new faith to come in because there was a huge resistance, Armenian resistance for, for many years, by our Mithraic priests who were against the the conversion of Armenia into Christianity. It wasn't uh, all about you know oh, flowers and balloons and everybody's excited that you know the good news has come. It was a very bloody war. Uh, you know, literally, it was done through the sword. And, and blood and, and this conversion because uh, look at it this way you cannot have a civilization uh, that has had uh, the experience of many faiths to come and knock in at their door and for them to have you know being Mithraic for many many years for thousands of years and then all of a sudden they change and and that's the thing if we if it was a smooth transition even our own people wouldn't write about the destruction of it all actually the way they have written um, they're, they're basically were boasting about, they were, uh, what's the other uh, term I can use? They were proud to write that our, uh, the Armenian pre-Christian civilization, they were, they were glad that they're being destroyed. That's how it's being written. And the only way you can write something like this is for the audience, for them to be also convinced that it was a good thing that the Armenian pre-Christian civilization was being destroyed. Um, I hope I was able sorry, to answer. I'm, I'm sorry, who wrote this? I'm, I apologize uh, for interrupting you. Uh, sure, uh, you, can, you can read Agatangelos. Um, you can also read, uh, you know, Jorge Nazis, um, written material. Uh, th those two uh, should, should suffice um, as far as the details of that. Uh, but if you just, uh, you know, I can even send you some of the, the, the articles that I have written 
uh, regarding this. Uh, if if you can give me, you know, even text. I don't know how. I don't know how you get information on 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 Clubhouse as far as how we can email each other. But um, my my website my my website is bahansetian.com. Very simple. Uh, there is a contact page um, on there. Uh, just send me an email, and then I'll respond to the uh, the references and the resources I was referring to. All right, Saro, thank you very much for your question. Um, and we're going to move on to Andy. Andy, if you want to unmute yourself and go ahead and ask Vaughn your questions. Vaughn, hey, man, it's been a while. Um, <laughs> gentlemen, thanks for having answer? me on here. Yeah. Quick question. So the last time we talked, which is, uh, man, it's probably been like four or five years now. <clears throat> You said you were going to do some research on the old, well, actually, I don't know if you guys even talked about this because I'm joining kind of late, but you said you were going to do some research on the old Armenian alphabet yep. and uh, potentially go to Matenadaran and yep. dig through some of the stuff. Right. Were you able to do that or? Well, I wasn't able to do that personally. And, um, but as far as the examination, I mean, the, the conversation we did have about, you know, our, our ancient alphabet and what it would look like. Um, the, the good thing is, you know, from our previous conversation five years ago, and in a way I kind of uh, did my introduction uh, before we started. Um, now I'm, I work with all the governments uh, across the globe. I have diplomatic immunity on international relations and uh, I want to utilize that privilege uh, for me to gain access to Matenadaran for the purposes of cultural preservation. And, and I'm hoping that uh, that can be utilized for this specific purpose um, because, um, you know, throughout our conversation today, we were really, you know, emphasizing on, especially myself, um, I, was, I was making the statement that it's not whether we had literature or alphabet before Messer Mashtuts or not. Uh, right. the, actual, the real question is, where is it hidden? Who has it? And then I, I'm hoping to to find that answer in my lifetime. So does Matanadaran have like manuscripts, you think? Or they of have course. other like archaeological uh, not, artifacts and stuff? Or Well, they have a lot of things. Uh, you know, this is not a surprise. It's not even uh, anything conspiracy related. Uh, anybody can try this. You know, go to Matanadaran and ask ask them that you want to go to all the, the stuff that they have, including all the closed doors they can get into. Let me see if they can. You can't even take photos. You know, uh, uh, in other words, it's it's uh, it's closed off to the general public. And I think that Matanadaran. Uh, I don't know. Um, I'm just gonna throw it out there. You know, the the Vatican, uh, even even the San Lazarus Island Library in Italy. You know, those are the three main areas that we can find our our pre in literature, and and uh, hopefully we can find it. All right, so everyone. Somehow the Vatican is involved, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want a quick. Quick, quick thing to add here, but the Vatican also doesn't allow people from the public to yeah, look see. at their archives yeah, as well. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in my opinion, St. Lazarus in Italy, I think that we can find many things there. Um, ju- just because uh, it's, I mean, th- they, they had to have a precursor or the seeds of the pre-Christian literature for them to be able to formulate the, uh, the Christian liturgy. You know, the, the elements had to have been there. And also um, for the audience, uh, for them to uh, keep this in mind, um, when you go to inside an, uh, a very old Armenian church, you know, there's this thing in the middle called Horan. Um, the reason why they called Horan is because uh, of the pre-Christian idea of the Mithraic priests was going to his library, bringing the, the book to and putting it on the Horan, and he was Horanal. He was going into the book to find answers for the person who was asking questions. So, for example, a farmer would come to the Mithraic priest and say, listen, you know, my, 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 my crops are not doing very well. What can I do? The Mithraic priest would go to the back and get a book on farming, and he would Go go into the uh, the book itself and find answers. That's why they call the Armenian, uh, uh, you know, even even the church or the, the altar, uh, yeah, the, uh, even the temples that they they what do you call it? They hold tachar, means tachar, it means give a solution. 
We talked about this on episode yeah. one, yeah. yeah. So you see now how it's kind of making sense now, where if we really think about that, how connected we are to the ancient past. And yeah. so it's just, this is just a continuation of it, that's all. It's it's really amazing how um, when you connect the dots, it, uh, it all comes together. That's, that's what you have to do with history. So that's yeah. what I meant on a different perspective to have. You see how kind of a new world opens up and it, it makes you now start thinking not questioning but ask, asking the right questions now yeah, yeah yeah um uh so is there anybody else on clubhouse that wants to ask a question to Vaughn? um if you do please uh, uh i should say Vaughn, not Vaughn. sorry <laughs> Vaughn <laughs> was, was so Vaughn. powerful Vaughn with his so uh, questions so <laughs> i feel like he should be on the show yes. um um but uh Vaughn, uh do you i mean we're about almost hour 40 minutes into the podcast and um uh, you know i know you you have some books that you've written and and you know we mentioned episode one but i want you to mention it again and i know you're working sure. on a new book so yes. if you want to talk about that a little yeah bit. sure um so for the sake of simplicity and accessibility um i created uh, my website bahansetian.com very simple um we i have the collection of videos i have the collection of books i have the collection of all the pdfs that are available for people um i i i do not advise anybody to buy anything from amazon right now because people buy my books at a very small price and then they put it five to a thousand dollars five hundred to a thousand dollars so it, it's just a gimmick um that they're pulling i don't get any profits from that um but um you can use my contact information to send me an email and and i can respond um i am uh what is that email um you know if you go to vahancetian.com under contact contact uh, information yeah. okay but as far as for my email it's vahan underscore setian at yahoo.com um can, can you name the books that you've written uh, uh yes um uh, uh let's see uh, letters, protons, and paradoxes, which was the the first one, and then language as a fingerprint. Um, that's the second one. Um, the Armenian origins of Busk. That's the third one. Um, I wrote a, a fourth paper called, uh, you know, the tipping point: COVID nineteen and the future of native health. Obviously, it doesn't relate to our topic. And then I'm I'm also doing a, a, the next one on the Sumerians. Um, quote unquote, and um, revisiting the evidence. That's that's what I call it. And I think that it will give a huge revelation of not only who they were, but how were they connected, not only locally, but also internationally or, or globally, you might say, because um, there there is a Sumerian fingerprint, um, just like the way I, I, I named my second book, Language as a Fingerprint. There is a Sumerian fingerprint uh, across the globe. And which which really does does tie to the Armenians themselves, and and I and I and I kind of uh, support the idea that that the Sumerians themselves were our ancient Armenians themselves, um, who were basically uh, inhibiting that that part of the world. So and it, when when should we expect that book? Um, well, uh, my my thing was that for me to release it in in May of this year, but you know, with COVID and my work and everything else, so I'm pushing toward December. Um, oh wow! Okay, that's, okay. that's not too so far away. Uh, Very yeah, soon. it's not too far. Um, I I just I mean, uh, my presence with you guys actually kind of shows me that uh, you know I should a little bit take it easy and you know breathe a little bit um, to spend some time you know with your friends and important things too. Yeah. Um, uh, besides from work, yeah. Uh, again, guys, uh, everyone on Clubhouse, if you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll bring you up to ask uh, your question um, as far as, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, for Vahan. Uh, my my next thing is um, I, I want to mention Vahan actually is going to be live on uh, on Wise Nuts, who are good friends of ours. And this podcast is going to be Monday, October 25th, 7.30 p.m. Pacific Coast Standard Time. Um, they're always live on YouTube, so make sure you uh, search for Wise Nuts. He's, uh, and then also Artur uh, Asaturian will be joining Vahan uh, as a guest, and they will be discussing and de uh, debating Armenian history, Christianity, and re religion. Uh, I don't know much about Art uh, Artur, but I did some research, and uh, apparently he's the founder of the uh, Apologia Center. Uh, he has a 
BA in, uh, uh, I guess, uh, biblical studies. And he also has a MA in philosophy from uh, Talbot School of Technology. So it should be an interesting, interesting show. Uh, so make sure you put that on your calendar. Again, that's October 25th, 7.30 p.m. Pacific Coast Standard Time on the Wise Nuts. Um, if, uh, if we don't have any more questions, uh, uh, Vahan, is there anything you want to add? Well, I, I do want to add, um, one thing for, for, for the audience and ourselves. And, and first of all, I, I, I want to thank you for the opportunity. Um, I know we're doing this as a team and whatever I can support you with, um, you know, I'm, I'm here for you as, as much as I can. Um, number two, I want to thank the audience, um, not just for their support, but also their, their ears and uh, their ability for them to examine evidence on their own. Um, we're, we're just laying this foundation for people to start asking questions. Um, and also, um, we're trying uh, very hard for this type of a podcast to be applicable to all ages. Yeah. Um, you know, without the use of profanity and, and, and anything else for even, let's say, a six, seven, eight year old child would you know, eavesdrop and, and learn something. Uh, just just one idea alone. Uh, I think that it could change somebody's course of life and they would become, you know, a, yeah. a, 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 right. I mean, that's how it started for me. Um, I, I was able to basically, you know, I was examining an altruism uh, for to, you know, just, just as part of the dissertation. And then I find, you know, Sumerians and then I find Armenian words and, 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 and look at across the globe and I find it. So that's how I started indirectly. And, and that's what I mean. You know, maybe one idea, one element would, would, would it spark somebody's idea. Yeah. And, right. And, and, and I just want to say that, you know, this is a very important podcast and I think that we should do more of these for the sake of, uh, saving, literally saving our existence, uh, because we have yeah. a lot of threats, you know, we have a lot of forces that are trying to eradicate us both at the academic level and also physically, you know, the, the war is, um, uh, is, is already evident what's happening there. So, uh, our country is, is shrinking in size and, and if we don't do anything about it, um, I think we're going to fade away, but if, <laughs> And and I and I try to publish as much as I can, though you know if there is a fading away effect, at least something is is published and, and it's out there for us. So appreciate both of you for giving me the opportunity. Thank you, to speak. Um, yeah, Thank you, Rahan. Well, I mean, uh, uh, you know, the the whole point of this podcast was uh, with the same vision, which is to uh, not only educate ourselves, because you know we're both history buffs, and and we, you know, you watch so many movies and read books about history about the romans and and the greeks and yeah, so forth the and, same thing. and and it's like what about our history and, and once we started doing research we found out that there's so much about our history that uh is is just beautiful and amazing and and as armenians when you learn about your history uh you, you, there's this sense of pride well, and, and besides that it ties into everything else yeah and everything else ties into our history yeah as yeah i mean look yeah. at look at the short adventure we've been yeah. on yeah look, look yeah at how i much mean we, we're learned. on our ninth episode and, and 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 not to you know uh toot our horn i guess we have over 2500 subscribers now which is amazing you know in such a short amount of time and and we're thankful proud of um, you guys proud of you guys thank you vaughn and and you helped us launch this yes, and and did. we uh, you know, speaking of, of educating the next generation, uh, it is our goal to reach out to the to the uh, Armenian schools. You know, uh, my my own children go to AGBU yeah. and, and that's mm -hmm. something I'm, I'm planning to do is contact them to somehow maybe implement our podcast uh, for them to, you know, uh, from the age they feel that it's appropriate for them to start, uh, you know, listening our sculptures uh, mm -hmm. Uh, are so important. The reason we do the sculptures is to spark conversation. Yeah. This isn't about, you know, um, uh, making money or anything of that sort. It's about having that in, in your house where, uh, it, you know, if your child asks you about it, 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 it helps you start that conversation and talk yeah. about a history. So uh, we have so much more to come. And Vahan, we're, we're grateful for you to always join us when you have the time. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you. The honor um, is all mine. 
Yeah. So uh, everybody on uh, Clubhouse and who's listening to us, thank you so much for joining us. It was a great show. Um, uh, Vic, I do have a question, brother. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's for Dr. Vaughn. Uh, thank you guys for giving me this, this opportunity. Um, Vaughn, you once, once mentioned that you have an idea of what the H means on um, Borta Pari. Um, on the stone release. I was curious if uh, you ever uh, shared that. Um, can you ask the question one more time? Uh, Vic, uh, did you hear yeah. the question? Uh, yeah. Can you, can you speak a little bit louder? Yeah. There, yeah. Is this better? Yes. Yeah, yes. There we go. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, you did w- once mention that you had an idea of what the H meant on the Bortasar uh, relief uh, or on the rock carving. Oh, you mean what they meant? Yeah. But you, I don't think I've ever heard you like uh, explain it or. Yes. Um, um, I, I think he's asking whether any decipherments were done. Um, at the Portas or complex, is that what you're asking? Yeah, to like um, explain like a deeper meaning of that letter oh, or sure. the shape. Yeah. Uh huh. So um, a, a German um, anthropologist um, several years ago, he passed away, but um, he was able to. Um, his last name is Schliemann. Um, he was able to kind of um, uh, make an attempt for him to decipher um, the. Uh, the the, the glyphs on on portas and what they meant um what he did what he didn't know is the armenian language but he tried though to decipher it on his own and and uh, the, he was able to find many words and, and many meanings that when he wrote it down it's they were all armenian there were the word you know kaj the word saj you know the word ara um and then the word you know to to deliver all those things, um, he wrote it down, but he never knew that he was actually, you know, uh, making a connection to the Armenian language. Now, here's the interesting part. Obviously, Port Asaj is in ancient Armenia. So even if even if he finds those words, that actually has a, a direct tie to it. And also, um, I didn't say this last time, but uh, some of the um geographical figures and and what has been uh what, what's the word um the, the way they have laid out uh the ge- geographical patterns on on the reliefs there um they're exactly the way our rugs are now and the way the ceiling is in our uh Gardney temple the same geographical pattern now Gardney and all yeah, so Garni and even our, our our carpets when they were being formed and weaved, uh, these were the times that we didn't even have the discovered Portasar. So we can't say that we copied from Portasar. And here's the other problem with the Portasar decipherment. Uh, first of all, they don't allow any Armenian archaeologists to go there, which means that we can't even examine our own culture. Uh, two, uh, Turkey is very close with Germans and, and vice versa. So they, they collaborate with one another without giving credit to anything when it comes to us. And I have found several you know, German uh, articles uh, with, with uh, Turkish contribution of the examin- examination of Porta Sash without giving us the opportunity for us to examine ourselves because I can reassure you that you know, if we had one of our own examining portas, that we would completely translate that into a comprehensible, you know, uh, language for us to examine. But yes, uh, to answer your question, you know, many of the examinations have been done. And also, here's another interesting thing: uh, that the German um, anthropologist uh, was um, examining one of the glyphs. He called it Indra. Um, but if you read Indra in reverse, it's Ardeni. Ardeni is the Armenian temple at, of, of Temple of Haldi. So, you know, you, we have to take that into consideration. Anyway, you know, thanks for the question. I hope I was able to answer that for you. 
All right, everyone. Um, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, we are getting close to uh, two hours. Uh, so All right. we, we kind of need is, to end it because which is, which is it felt a, like which 10 is, minutes, man. It yeah. like 10 it's minutes. a successful podcast. No, no, I know. <laughs> but, you know, uh, uh, <laughs> we have a limit of hour and a half max. Is, but, you is, know, with the live shows, it always takes uh, it always, you know, obviously but overlaps. Okay. But uh, hopefully next time we can do it live, you know, we'll be there. Too. Yeah. Are we, are we, are and, we pushing to like cognac? Are we, are we pushing? to like joe rogan status like three four <laughs> yeah. hours we're, yeah. we're, by the way everybody we are working on our youtube setup uh yeah, so we whenever we have a guest uh we will uh definitely have uh the more youtube visual. live more visual so you yeah, guys can visual. see us and our guests um i want to mention that uh not next episode episode so next episode would be 10 ex- episode 11 Kevork Nazarian yeah, will be Nazarian joining, will joining be us live, yeah, back, nice. and we're going to talk nice. about the Kingdom of Cilicia yes. or Kilikia. So, Kilikia, yeah, yeah um, and I know Gevork, Vahan and Kevork are good friends. Yeah, yeah, he, he, treasure, yeah, he definitely is. Yeah. We, we've become good friends. Yeah, we've become uh, good oh, yeah. friends with Kevork. Kevork's a Kevork's a treasure trove. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. Yeah, I, I know really him is. since when I was what uh, 13, 14. Yeah. Oh really? wow. Yeah. That's oh, right. Wow. Yeah. That is a long time. I, I remember um, uh, when I met him. I mean, my friend was his cousin, and um, and I was in his room, and I'm saying, "What are you doing?" I remember he said, "Well, I'm I'm studying the the Armenian swastika." I remember still that he was, <laughs> you know, he was doing that. So after that, it became, and then we started talking many years after that yeah. when he was building the ArmenianHighlands.com website. Yeah, yeah he's, uh, he's he's helped me out a little bit. I'm yeah, to, to a say little bit, <laughs> just to say the least. Yeah, yeah. that's all he's I'm gonna awesome. leave it at. That's yeah. all I'm gonna leave he it. Has at. A very good memory. Yeah, yes, um, he does. Everyone uh, who's listening, if you like our podcast, please subscribe, share, let everybody know about it. It's Med Hillsnet. Uh, what we want to mention, uh, you know, obviously this whole thing started with first doing our, our. Uh, uh, you know the sculptures so uh we are shipping the tigran the great sculptures uh the uh, uh vartan mamikonya sculpture is at pre-order we're going to start production actually we are in production what am i saying uh those will be shipping soon and then we announced our new sculpture which is queen ashren and that is uh at pre-order and we're going to hope to um uh, you know uh, uh, have that shipping soon as well and then we have our a fourth one coming up and we're not going to announce that now no. but it has no. something to do Don't with our it. our language Don't um talk about it. and then uh make sure you visit vahan you want to plug your website no or uh, any type of information to lead to any of your uh, work and whatnot yeah so that's uh vahansetian.com is where everybody should go because i put everything into into those uh, tabs videos audio and books yeah yeah okay yeah. Perfect. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we appreciate it. And uh, this podcast will be up tomorrow on all platforms. So I know everybody who's on Clubhouse got to listen to it live. Or if you didn't get to uh, catch the beginning, tuned in late, tuned in late yeah. you can catch it tomorrow. It'll be up on all major pal- uh, platforms. Thank you again. And uh, we'll uh, till the next episode, I guess. Yeah, All right, next everyone. episode sounds good. Take, take care, guys. Yeah. Take care, everyone.